Hello friends. In previous video, we have derived the equation for the torque of an induction motor. Then we have also derived the equation for the starting torque. And we have derived the equation for the torque at the synchronous speed. So in this video, we are going to study what is the condition for maximum torque. And then we are going to substitute that condition in the equation for maximum torque to find the value of the maximum torque. So let us start with this video. So the learning objectives for this session are first we are going to study what is the condition for maximum torque. Then we are going to see what are the conclusions that can be derived. And then we are going to study the condition for the maximum torque at starting. So let us start with this video. So first let us see the condition for maximum torque. Now as you have already seen in the previous derivation of the previous video, then the value of the torque when the motor is at running condition, then that formula is given by Td is equal to Ks e20 square r2 divided by r2 square plus bracket s into x20 whole square. Now if we assume that the impedance of the stator is negligible, then for a particular value of supply voltage V1, e20 that is the EMF induced in the rotor remains constant. So let us assume that K E20 square is equal to constant that is K1. So here what we are going to do is we are going to assume E20 square is equal to constant. Now in this equation if you see in the numerator we already have one constant that is K. So here we need another constant so we are assuming it as K1. So what we are going to do is k into e20 square is equal to k1 that is constant. So from equation 1 and 2 we can say td is equal to k1. So here k e20 square is replaced by k1. td is equal to k1 s r2 divided by r2 square plus bracket s into x20 square. Let it be equation number 3. Now what I have to do is I want to eliminate this value of slip from the numerator. So let us divide the numerator as well as denominator by slip S. So we get Td is equal to K1 R2 divided by R2 square divided by S plus S into X20 square. Now if we see here in equation 3, we have bracket S X20 square. So it becomes S square into X20 square. So if we divide it by S, we will remain only 1S. So the equation is Td is equal to K1 R2 divided by R2 square upon S plus S into X20 square. Let it be equation number 4. Now observe the denominator of this equation number 4 very carefully. If we see properly, then this is very similar to the quadratic equation which we have seen in algebra. That is A square plus B square. So if we see properly here, this is our A square whereas this whole term is our B square. So if we want the values of A and B, then we can say A is equal to R2 divided by root S, whereas B is equal to root S into X20. So let us see further how we can use these two terms. So now here, we know that A square plus B square is equal to bracket A minus B bracket square plus 2AB. So if we solve this bracket, we will get a square minus 2ab plus b square. Now plus 2ab minus 2ab will cancel. Finally, we will get a square plus b square. So this term a square plus b square can be mentioned in this form. That is a square plus b square is equal to bracket a minus b bracket square plus 2ab. So as I have already told you, in this equation, in the denominator, we have the same pattern. That is a square plus b square. So our a is R2 divided by root s, whereas B is root s multiplied by x20. So if we take the same pattern of this equation, that is a square plus b square is equal to a minus b bracket square plus 2ab, then the equation can be modified as Td is equal to k1 R2 divided by bracket R2 divided by root s minus x20 into root s. So here our a is r2 divided by root s, b is x20 multiplied by root s. So a minus b square this term plus 
twice into R2 into X20. So if we multiply these two terms, root is root is will get cancelled. So we will get two R2 into X20. So our equation becomes TD is equal to K1 into R2 divided by bracket R2 divided by root is minus X20 into root is whole square plus two R2 X20. Let it be equation number five. Now we are going to derive the condition for the maximum torque. Now, in order to get the maximum torque, this RHS side of the equation should be maximum. So, when can we get a particular equation maximum? When its denominator is minimum. So, in order to get minimum denominator, so that we can find the condition of maximum torque, we have to take this term that is R2 divided by root S minus x20 multiplied by root s whole square is equal to 0. When this term becomes 0, the denominator will be minimum. When the denominator will be minimum, numerator will be maximum. Eventually, this whole RHS side will be maximum and the torque will be maximum. So, in order to obtain the condition of maximum torque, it will be only possible when R2 divided by root s minus x20 multiplied by root s whole square is equal to 0. Now, if I take square root on both sides of equation, we will get R2 divided by root s minus x20 into root s is equal to 0. Now, let us take this negative term on the RHS side of the equation. So, we will get R2 divided by root s is equal to x20 multiplied by root s. Now, I will take this root s in the denominator on the left hand side of the equation to the right hand side. So, here it is divided, here it will get multiplied. So again, the equation can be written as R2 is equal to X20 multiplied by root S multiplied by root S. So the product of two square root of S becomes S. So the equation is R2 is equal to S into X20. Let it be equation number six. So we are studying the condition for maximum torque. Now we know that S into X20 is nothing but x2s. So again, the equation 6 can be written as r2 is equal to x2s. So this is the condition for maximum torque. So we can say that whatever torque is developed in the induction motor, it will be maximum when the rotor resistance per phase will be equal to rotor reactance per phase under the running condition. So the maximum torque can also be obtained by substituting S is to X20 is equal to R2 in equation number one. So how we got this? See here, S X20 is equal to X2S. So R2 is equal to X2S. So we get S into X20 is equal to R2. This we have already seen in equation number six. So if we substitute this in equation one, then the equation for torque can be written as maximum torque TD max is equal to Ks e20 square r2 divided by r2 square plus r2 square. Why? Because I have replaced s square x20 square by r2. Now see, here in denominator we have two r2. So again, we can write td max is equal to Ks e20 square r2 divided by two r2 square. So one r2 in the numerator will get cancelled with one r2 of the denominator. So we get Maximum torque TD max is equal to Ks e20 square divided by 2 R2. Let it be equation number 8. So from equation 7, we can modify equation 8 as TD max is equal to Ks e20 square divided by 2 S x20 because we know that R2 is equal to S into x20. Now see here, in the numerator, we have one S that is slip and again in denominator, we have slip. So both the slips will get cancelled. So again, we get TD max is equal to K E20 square divided by 2 X20. Let it be equation number 9. So this relation, if you see, it is clear that the maximum torque is completely independent of the rotor resistance. If we see on the right hand side of the equation, there is no term involving rotor resistance. So equation 9 clearly states that the maximum torque is completely independent of the rotor resistance. Now let us assume that SM is the value of slip corresponding to the maximum torque. It means that at the slip SM, 
the torque will be maximum so sm is the value of the slip corresponding to the maximum torque then again equation 6 can be modified as so equation 6 was our condition for the maximum torque so just we have to replace the slip from sm that is value of slip for maximum torque so r2 is equal to sm into x20 again so the value of sm becomes sm is equal to r2 divided by x20 that is equation number 10 so what can we conclude from this equation so from this equation we can derive certain conclusions which are as i have already mentioned our maximum torque is completely independent of the rotor circuit resistance because in the equation of maximum torque there was no term involving the rotor resistance also we can see that the maximum torque varies inversely as the standstill reactors if we see in this equation our maximum torque is inversely proportional to the reactance so maximum torque varies inversely as the standstill reactance of the rotor so if we want maximum torque the value of x20 that is standstill reactance of rotor should be minimum or as small as possible also if we see then the slip at which maximum torque occurs depends on the rotor resistance see here sm is the value of slip at which the maximum torque occurs right so sm depends upon r2 but torque does not depend upon r2 so even though our torque or the maximum torque is independent of resistance but the slip at which the maximum torque occurs depends on the resistance so if we vary the rotor resistance then the maximum torque can be obtained at any desired slip or motor slip so if we see here in the equation of maximum torque there is no term involving the rotor resistance so the maximum torque is completely independent of rotor resistance but the slip at which the maximum torque occurs that is sm it depends on the rotor resistance so we can say that indirectly the position of the maximum torque will also depend on the rotor so these are the certain conclusions which we can derive from the maximum torque now let us see maximum torque at starting so at starting we know that nr is equal to 0 that is rotor speed is equal to 0 so slip is equal to ns minus nr upon ns as nr is equal to 0 our slip becomes ns divided by ns so slip is 1 so if we substitute slip is equal to 1 in the condition for maximum torque that is equation number 1 we will get r2 is equal to s into x to 0 that was our condition so r2 divided by x20 becomes s that is equal to 1 or we can say that r2 is equal to x20 that is rotor resistance is equal to standstill rotor reactance this is the condition for the maximum torque at starting so we can say that the rotor resistance is not more than 1 or 2% of its leakage reactance for higher efficiency so this is another note that the value of the rotor resistance is not more than 1 or 2% of its leakage reactance if we consider for the higher efficiency so if we want to increase the starting torque what we have to do is we have to add the extra resistance to the rotor circuit at start and then gradually cut it out as the motor speeds up now if you remember the construction of the induction motor then only slip ring induction motor has the provision of adding the extra resistance so this is possible only in case of slip ring induction motor condition for maximum torque then we have studied what is the value of torque with that maximum condition then we have seen that the maximum torque is independent of the rotor resistance but the slip at which the maximum torque occurs it depends on the resistance and also we have seen the condition for maximum torque at starting thank you